Okay, good afternoon, good morning, good mid-morning, good whatever time of the day it is for you. My name's Ben, welcome to uh, Astro Biological HQ. I'm sitting in the nerve center. From the uh, twitching innards of space and time comes Astro Biological. Um, g'day, welcome to today's podcast. I'm, I've got a cold, so please excuse my voice, but uh, you know, the show must go on. And uh, how are you? It's boiling hot here in Australia. It's 42 degrees outside, 42 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's just a lot. And so I'm inside, enjoying the air conditioning, lots of cool drinks. Might crack open a beer or something soon because, you know, Australia and beer. Back together like horse and carriage. But uh, just, uh, yeah, this is a, a weekly recap of the group and little bits of news and stuff to chat about the group um, good growth still it's doing quite well thank you all to uh, everyone who takes part in this group it's been some good posts this week um, for example let me look up on the group insights here and um, while we're doing that I'd like to talk about my YouTube channel Astro Biological <coughs> it's out there it's waiting for you if you haven't subscribed already why not um, just subscribe to the channel or the dog gets it, okay? That's, I'm just letting you know now. Pretend that this uh, is one of those little ransom messages. Or oh, don't do that. I'm not going to kill any dog. I wouldn't do that. But yeah, the channel's doing okay. It's still small, but uh, it, it is growing. A few couple of new subscribers each week, which is not bad for me. That sounds like peanuts, but it's not bad. So thanks to subscribers, anyone from this group who subscribed, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate it all, it's, it helps a lot. I made a video last night, put it on the group last night, um, about um, some behind the scenes stuff, just a little behind the scenes glimpse into my setup. Some of you would have seen my very, very primitive, very rudimentary uh, quote unquote studio, for lack of a better word. I guess it is a studio, but because it's where a an episode of Astro Biological, Biological is made. So yeah, you saw my um, my lighting rig, my camera, my one and only camera, my microphone, my little portable microphone, and some other little bits and pieces I use in the green screen. But I use all these things to uh, produce an episode of Astro Biological for you, and uh, yeah, I'm happy with the results. Really, I've got to say, looking looking at them for what they are, and anyone who has some kind of skill set which could aid in the channel's growth or make giving it the better overall look and feel. Uh, I understand that a few of you out there, uh, graphic designers or um, composers. Um, I've got to know a couple of guys in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Anton Kronichny, uh, Winter Bynes. Um, Friend of Mythic has joined. Friend of Mythic is a YouTuber of that I've, uh, I've gotten to know. Uh, a Dutch national who lives in Denmark, I believe. Um, we've gotten to know each other, and his uh, channel is quite good. I recommend you check it out. Um, I'll put links up to my channel on the page, or the group page over time, but I'll, if I remember, that's if I remember, I'll put it up when I finish this podcast. Now, I guess that a podcast. It's been going well. Points of order, uh, I'm pretty happy with the group's activities this week. Um, very happy actually. I joined a few other groups, um, getting some other ideas, some discussion over on science and futurism with Isaac Arthur's group. Um, just, I guess, uh, sharing some thoughts over there and getting some good feedback and good ideas for my future work. Um, one which springs to mind is um, a video on what life, if any, could live within the ice of Europa, not under it, because astrobiology uh, focuses a lot, <coughs> excuse me, astrobiology focuses a lot on uh, Europa and Enceladus as possible sites of alien life, and sounds fairly reasonable, we need to go in there and check of course, uh, missions are on the drawing board, uh, for instance the Europa Clipper mission, 
which is a bit of an on again off again thing at the moment but uh, hopefully it eventually sees a light of day and heads out to Europa sometime soon its intent is to uh, get beneath the ice of Europa and explore uh, uh, an, a 100 kilometer deep ocean which is geez that'll be really something else wouldn't it now Europa is much smaller than Earth some uh, somewhat smaller than our moon even but uh, there's a lot of water there way more than we've got so who who knows wow just the mind boggles uh, excuse me uh, Enceladus is the same Enceladus rather is the same um, yeah all kinds of organic goodness oozing out of that moon in the form of geysers which jet sometimes several hundred kilometers out into space and the Cassini mission the Cassini probe which recently uh, went out in the blaze of glory a couple of months ago in the atmosphere of Saturn uh, flew through those plumes one time and took some samples and found that they were rich in organic compounds and molecules so that's a pretty hopeful sign and Enceladus may also have uh, hydrothermal vents um, these have been detected or surmised by the um, discovery that uh, Enceladus may have hydrothermal vents um, these have been surmised by the presence of molecular hydrogen which is produced uh, around similar fissures on the Earth's ocean floor along places like the Pacific Rim and along, along the edges of tectonic plates where um, crust is thin and heat and energy seeps through from the Earth's core uh, molecular hydrogen is in abundance so that's a pretty hopeful sign for all you astrobiology freaks as well and the astrobiological posts well, the astrobiology posts and conversation has been pretty interesting this week I've had some chats with people about um, life forming in space um, not on a planet uh, life forming in space that's uh, a big question who knows there's been some discussion and questions about panspermia and could um, mechanisms by which life could reach out of space from a planet such as Earth and I thought I suggested in a conversation that um, volcanic eruptions could be a source of ejector or things heading into space and organic compounds and single-celled organisms can be durable enough to survive some pretty arduous conditions and trips and so theoretically they can make it into space and then from henceforth out into the universe now who knows it's entirely possible i found a great article once on what would become of an astronaut's body if it was just left to float forever in space and could it seed life on other planets and that was pretty good because the astronaut's body naturally contains a lot of bacteria and viruses and uh, god knows what else protists even and so these organisms may not live but the, the, his, his body is, is, is essentially a reservoir of organic compounds which are ready to go if they were to land on another planet make it to another a heavenly body and life could theoretically spring from his or her corpse that was a, that's a great idea for a science fiction story even but um, just imagine that let's ponder that for a few moments and I'll be right back. Okay, astrobiological back again. Uh, good to have you back. Now, during the break, I was thinking about uh, my, my uh, behind the scenes video I put up, and I'm going to put make another little one about uh, how I get sound sound working. Now, by that I mean, obviously I can record it, that's easy enough, but I record it from two different sources, and how do I get the sound all aligned, so, you know, it's not out of sync, and I'll show you how to do that. I'll do things in a bit of a backyard way, but uh, I'm going to show you that if I can do it, anyone can do it. You don't need any kind of special equipment or anything like that. So that sounds like a pretty cool idea for a little little video at. I've also got some other ideas for videos featuring um, little animations I've made in the last nearly two years on my YouTube stuff. Made a few GIFs and animations, which would make that actually a pretty interesting little collection, I think. Um, I'll show also how I make those, if people are interested. Um, 
yeah, that's uh, that'll be fun. If anybody wants to know, I'll put it up. Okay, I'll put that on my checklist of things to do on the ever-growing pile of things I intend to do. All right, so moving on. Um, I'm working on my, my Wolf Riot blog post. Wolf Riot stars, which I've harped on about a little bit in the last couple of podcasts. Um, they really are interesting. And I'm focusing on a particular Wolf Riot star called Wolf Riot 124, or WR124. Uh, lies some 15,000 light years away from Earth, uh, nestled within a molecular cloud or nebula about six light years across. And this star is, for the last 20,000 years, has been, for reasons unknown, basically tearing itself apart. And they're sending out Earth-sized chunks, planet-sized chunks, chunks of stellar stuff the size of planet Earth are being thrown out into space from the surface or atmosphere of this star. And uh, <clears throat> under the pressure of insane solar winds, because these stars are so luminous, several million times brighter than our own sun, that it is an intense radiation pressure or solar wind, which we experience in our solar system, but at a much milder rate. Now these winds are so powerful that they crack along at about 1600 miles or kilometers a second. I always get the units mixed up. But whatever it is, it's pretty damn fast, and they're flinging out bits of star stuff into space. Planet-sized chunks of star flying in a solar wind. Just, just place that image in your head and turn it around for a few minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Is that super cool or what? And my blog post uh, is kind of a semi-fictional look at one of these, uh, this star, like a, from the point of view of a an extreme sports tour operator who's hit the gold mine, so to speak. Um, he's got sick of wrestling sharks on Earth and cave climbing and abseiling and all that, all that jazz. And I see space as the final frontier for extreme sports. Um, one of my uh, YouTube videos looked at extreme places in the solar system, so I might do another extreme sports video, I think, um, about um, some crazy places beyond the solar system. There's plenty more places within the solar system. I'll look at those too. But there are some really hardcore places out there too. <coughs> Excuse me. So, any thoughts on that? Um, you can check out the video if you like. It's just called Extreme Places in the Solar System. And, yep, that'll give you some ideas. I left comments in the group or in the, in, on the channel comment section if you like. Um, as always, I'm keen to hear suggestions from people about what they'd like to hear or see from me. I'm trying to make this channel a, a, and group a, a going concern. Um, Facebook is trying to muscle in on YouTube's um, monopoly on distribution of you know homemade video content for want of a better description uh, and they I've seen some uh, pages producing episodes uh, with the Facebook is introducing uh, uh, its own uh, YouTube style um, service so I've applied for that I'm looking into that I'd like to try and do something with that if I can haven't heard back yet but uh, fingers crossed because if I could focus more directly on um, possibly Facebook as a means of distributing videos because YouTube is very slow and um, unhelpful. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I may just do both. We'll see how it goes. I fail to see why I shouldn't give it a try. Um, yep. I just got back from a trip to Victoria um, a couple of days ago. I visited first my auntie's farm which featured in the last podcast. Then we uh, were here, there and everywhere. I did a podcast a few days ago from the slopes of an extinct volcano on in uh, near Warrnambool, the town of Warrnambool in Victoria. Uh, but I wasn't happy with the quality of the recording itself, so I haven't put it up yet. I may or may not. I guess right now the work title of this podcast is Podcast 4, whereas that one actually was Podcast 4. This one in Podcast 5, but yeah, it just didn't sound good, so... I wasn't happy with it. 
So yeah, but uh, it was an inter interesting walk. I've been there before. Um, when I was making a YouTube video, one of my earliest ones, way back at the start of things, in March 2016, I made a video about slime molds. And whilst making that video, I was looking high and low for uh, slime molds in my local area and didn't find any. But uh, sometime later, whilst on honeymoon in Victoria, I went for a walk on the slopes of this volcano and bumped into some slime molds under a piece of rotting wood and I was absolutely over the moon because I've never seen these things before. There's a little video on the Ben's Lab page actually, but I'll, it was just cool, it looked like a little white brain crawling over this log and I got it, but uh, yeah, there's all kinds of weird creepy crawlies in these places if you know where to look. That's the cool part about it. I like to spend a lot of time outdoors, what well, was, I haven't done it in a couple of weeks now. Um, with a little macro lens I have for my smartphone, just photographing bugs and small things. But uh, like I say, I've dropped off with that in the last month or two for various reasons. But uh, I may get back into it, time permitting. Right, my throat's getting dry as you can hear. But I don't want to cut this podcast too short, I want to keep it about half an hour. So it's a consistent format. I hope you guys are enjoying these, anyone who's listening to them. I hope uh, people are getting something out of them, even if it's just uh, a chatty voice in the background for them to fall asleep to, it's fine. Um, yeah, I don't know where the podcast will go, I, they're kind of like a little side project, um, designed mainly for the Facebook group, the Astrobiological Facebook group, um, anyone who's listening to them, thanks a lot. Um, if anybody wants to be part of that podcast, they can. Uh, that would be a good idea because, uh, like I said, many people in the group have expertise or from uh, or different backgrounds or different knowledge, and it'd be just interesting to chat with some people and share share their their stories. So, if you want to have a chat on a podcast, uh, let me know. That'd be super cool. Um, you can inbox me. That'll be fine. Okay, so moving on. Other things other things I'm working on. Um, I'm one of those sort of guys who just has tries to he tries to do everything. Now <clears throat> I'm one of these guys who I've just had to crack up a drink, my throat's getting really dry in this air conditioning. I said a bit throaty on I apologize, but let's move on. My shine princess. I'm one of these guys who uh, tries lots of things, doesn't always succeed, but at least has a go. And one thing I'd like to get at least a little bit, of, a little bit better at is some 3D modeling and animations. And I've had something called Blender suggested to me. And does anyone know anything about Blender? Um, what what it does, how powerful it is. My brother swears by it. He's an IT professional. He knows computers inside and out. Some other people have sworn by it too, but there are uh, there are other packages out there that anyone knows of for a beginner like myself to produce just sort of rudimentary 3D animations. I want logos and logo flyovers and things like that, and credits and stuff. Because right now I do the um, all of the. I guess the the text stuff, the text effects in my videos on my phone because I just don't like the the text and and effects tools on Adobe Premiere which I use for making my videos. They're just impossible to use and counterintuitive and stupid. So, yep, I get out the old phone and Power Director and make my fonts and and words and titles and stuff on that and upload them to the computer and that works fine. But if I could do um, some slightly more advanced stuff using a slightly more advanced tool that'd be good but I wouldn't even know where to start <coughs> ah, another drink Kirk's sugar free lemonade when all else fails grab a can of hot lemonade and drink it whatever gets you through tonight so here we're going 
we're going quite well. Um, recap of the podcast. Okay, so I talked about what I've been doing this week, how the growth's been going. It's been going well. Thanks again. Um, some good growth, new members. Thank you to thank you to them. I try and thank them at least once a week. Um, I think some I might thank the same person twice, just the, the way things overlap sometimes. Might you know. Instead of spacing the thank you post a week apart, maybe six days apart, so it gets go seven days back. So I post maybe thank twice, but you know, doesn't matter. No biggie. The world's not going to end, I guess. Um, <coughs> well, the posts have been good. The responses have been good. Um, conversations have been good. Um, feel free to post your own stuff. Uh, Rohan Patkery is a blogger himself one of the members of the group and he's put up some stuff which is interesting so I've, I've, I'm happy to share people's stuff if, on this page and group if people have something to share so if you've got a YouTube channel or a blog or anything else uh, that's related to what we talk about or what the group is focused on um, I'm happy to push it as much as I can because I don't mind doing that it uh, gets us all noticed and it helps us all out so help me help you help myself Help you help myself and stuff. Right, another drink, excuse me. I try to keep this cast about half an hour in length. It seems like a, a short enough time frame. Short enough so that you're not uh, dying from uh, boredom, but long enough that uh, they're worth just putting on the background and doing stuff too. Um, several other YouTubers that I subscribe to do the same thing and you can get away with that watching their videos at all just listen to them in the background um, Isaac Arthur and Parallaxicity are two that come to mind but these uh, cast mine are really tend to do the same thing just to be I guess provide put a voice to the group um, so you know who I am what the group is it's me it's Ben um, my wife's an admin on it as well, but I, I carry most of it. Um, but it's good to know. It's good to. It get. I think it gives the group a bit of a you know, bit of a heart, bit of a soul. It's got a, a voice to it as well. But um, anyone else is free to contribute or take part in a podcast if they want. And again, this is a, a call for submissions or 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 inquiries of interest. If you are an astrobiologist or a scientist or have some kind of expertise in a related field, um, people may like to hear your story and it, I'd love to hear it. <coughs> and let's get together and see what we can do. Right, probably going to finish up now. My throat is just not working today. The air conditioning in the house is just drying it out and I can't talk so I apologise for that, but I hope you've enjoyed this little rant, and I will see you on the group, see you out there in social media land, and have a good day, morning, afternoon, night, whatever you are, whatever it is for you, and whatever you're doing, I hope you enjoy it. This is Ben from Astrobiological, giving you the universe plain human. <laughs>